Dive deep into who you are and really get clear on that authentic version of yourself externally or not attached to any external influence. And when you can find that, that's where the true magic will begin to unfold in your life, both in your video presence, your online presence, and in all areas of your life. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are and wherever you're watching from, I'm Matt Pierce. I'm your host today, and we're talking about story and who you are and how that all plays into as you're making vi video. Maybe you're using images, but we're going to connect it all together because we got a fantastic guest for you guys today. But before we get to Amanda real quick, I just want to say that if you like what you're seeing, make sure you like and subscribe, but also email us. Tell us what you don't like. I dare you to email the visual lounge at techsmith.com. Tell me what can we do better? But now on to the things that we want to talk about today. Let me introduce Amanda. Amanda Horvath is a YouTuber and course creator who has taught video marketing online for five years now. She's all about creating a personal brand online that can support the lifestyle you want to live rather than fitting life around social media. Amanda is also a young mom and human design enthusiast. And with that, we're so excited and thrilled to have Amanda join us here in the Visual Lounge. Hey, Amanda. Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. And and I'm just going to say, you know, uh, just gush a little bit here because we TechSmith, we're fans. We've liked, love what the videos you made. There's a great one you made uh, with about Snagit. So we're so grateful to get a chance to talk to you here on the show. Y'all are very appreciative. I, I appreciate you a lot. <laughs> thank that, you. <laughs> that is, it's a very Midwestern way that we are. We just can't help say thanks. And it will take about 12 days to end any conversation because, you know, Again, we're very Midwestern here. So, <laughs> well, I want to I want to dive in, and we always start with kind of a, a couple questions at, up front before we get into kind of the core topic. But we're, we're pared down a little bit, so I want to ask you one question. So, you obviously have made a lot of videos. You've uh, been fairly successful in growing your YouTube channel using video in other parts of your career. What's one tip that you would give our audience about improving? Uh, how they use video or make video in the things that they're choosing to do and wh when they do choose to use video. Just make every single video that you make better than the last one. I think that is a key component. And honestly, even as a creator, I've been doing this for five and a half years. I definitely fell out of doing that. I fell into my comfort zone of just doing the same thing on repeat because it's sustainable. I know it works. And it can be really challenging to break out of that rut and the algorithms and your audience kind of get sick of the same thing over and over again. So that one tip, just continue evolving, continue getting better with each video that you make will keep you cutting edge. Yeah. I mean, we know it. Uh, you know, it. it's, it's such an important piece, right? Like just continual improvement. But also I love what you said there that uh, you know, changing it up a little bit, because if I see the same video time after time, after time, after time, I don't need to see that video again. Right. Yeah. And the style of it too, you know, instead of, I had a very systematic approach to creating videos, which was extremely beneficial from a sustainability standpoint. But I think it could, like I said, you could, you could fall into that comfort zone too much. And so while if you find something that works, continue doing it. There's no point in not doing that, but then see, okay, how can I make this 1% better and 1% better and 1% better each time you make a video? Well, I, I love this advice. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it ties back to James Clear's Atomic Habits. He talked about this idea of the 1% getting better. And uh, so we're, we're big fans of that concept. So thank you. Um, when when I reach out to you and you you know I ask all my guests to share like hey is there something you really want to talk about and you you share back in a statement and I want to I'm going to share that statement which is something I don't normally do uh, but it was just like it was very concise and I thought it was really powerful and it's going to shape our conversation you said story matters more than quality of video and who you are matters more than either and that's I mean in a, that could be the show right we could be done so help <laughs> help walk me through this though like. When, when you when you think about this, for you, why is it that story matters more than the quality of video? Let's start with that, and then there's the second half of it. There was this one creator that blew up overnight that was 
I think her name was like Giselle or Janelle maybe. And she was someone that lived in her van with a snake and she shot videos on her phone and they were terrible quality. I mean, there was tons of grain. I don't even think it was a more recent iPhone. You might even know who I'm talking about, Matt. I'm not sure. But when you watch her videos, like she was just so captivating as a character and the way that she incorporated editing into it to like kind of punch in, not worrying about the quality of the video or anything like that really immediately drew someone in despite the fact that it wasn't great quality. And I think so many people get lost in the tech. They think, oh, I have to come out. I have to look super professional right from the get go. And, and all of that ends up just stripping away authenticity. Because if you buy a camera that is over the technical capabilities that you have at your fingertips right now, like that you're you already know, then it's going to be putting obstacles in your path. And you're just going to be tripping up on the tech from getting it off your camera card to the computer to the editing room. Like you're, every every single step is just going to be so much harder. And so story, if you can just strip down the tech and focus on what is the simplest way that I can create a video, then it makes you focus on story. And it makes you focus on what you're actually saying in the video. And that's what ultimately matters instead of focusing on what's fancy and what's new and how to be, you know, the best out there at, with the tech and all that. Uh, yeah. I mean, what, what great advice. But I think, so from my perspective, I think uh, I talk to a lot of people who are trying to, to create content for various, various locations, whether it's their, their organizations ask them to do something, or maybe they're trying to get started on YouTube and do that. But there is this real sense that quality, like, defines who you are. Like, if you're not, well, if it's not quality, it's not good. So are there, for, from your perspective, Amanda, are there boundaries to that? Like, are there things like, yeah, like, sacred things like, oh, gosh, don't do this. Or it's okay if you break this quality rule because no one cares. Or, or is it like, yeah, just really go out there and start telling make something engaging and interesting. Okay, such a good point. It's everything is nuanced, right? Yep. So I'll give you two things immediately popped up into my mind. So the first, Peter McKinnon recently released a video about the iPhone 15 Pro coming out. And he is clearly, he is, for those of you that don't know him, he is a YouTuber. He talks about photography, video, how to do it yourself. Um, and he's just an interesting character to watch. Well, this video was talking about how the DSLR, which was, you know, the handheld camera that you could use to point and shoot essentially and make really amazing uh, videos, disrupted the entire film industry because now it went from having super incredibly expensive cinematic cameras to this thing that anyone could get for a thousand dollars or whatever. Well, the iPhone is kind of doing something similar. And when you watch his video, it's not like anyone that picks up an iPhone is going to be able to produce the video that he produced. He is a pro that knows how to use that gear. And I think that's where it starts to, the consideration or the nuance is how well can you use what you have access to and can you focus on getting better at that? So instead of, you know, if you are using a phone that's six years old, upgrade. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't use a super old gear or that, you know, T3i that's been sitting on your shelf since you bought it in the whatever, however old you were, right? Like The early aughts, right? Years ago. <laughs> yes. That is also going to be creating more problems in your life as well to use old tech. So you do want to find that balance. And then once you've found that balance, like, focus on the craft of it more than anything. Um, and I had a second example, but it, I'm blanking on it right now, but it might come, it might come back to me. If it does, okay. you can let, you can let us know, but, I, but you're right. I, and I, and I love that. Right. Cause obviously I've watched Peter McKinnon stuff and I, I recommend people go watch if you want really interesting, high quality, uh, per take on making content. Uh, he does a fantastic job. In fact, I just watched one of his videos. He did, a partnership with a uh, Renee Ritchie and talking about the algorithm and uh, getting your stuff found. It was like, it was a great video and, and, but you're right. But Peter is in a class kind of as of his own in terms of what he understands and knows, like he can go from the highest 
kind of quality camera red or something like that down to an iPhone and he can make it do way more than I can, right? Like, cause he knows the techniques. I right. uh, had a, 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 someone that pointed out to me that like, you know, I Apple is particularly really good about this saying like, you can make this, look at this video you can make with the iPhone 15, but it's also on a $300,000 crane, right? Like, so they know that they, you could, you know, it can do a lot of things, but it also takes an expert. It takes some things. So, but still that's, if that's the best camera that you have available to you and you understand how it works, it seems like that's, that's the magic, right? Like you understand it, you can use it. Yeah. And I think we just live in an era where that is the case these days, like that you can focus on having minimal gear in order to produce something that is incredible. And just recognizing that the best gear isn't necessarily going to make your videos better. It's the person behind it that can use it. So I think that's really, yeah, the nuance there. Well, you said something else that was interesting about the the story about this, this woman who's, you know, making low quality, low quality in terms of the technical quality content, but she was interesting, right? She had, I mean, living in a van with a pet snake just seems not something I would choose to do, but good for her. And I'm, I'm sure, but this sounds like fascinating, like what in the world's going to happen? And, and so from a perspective of like story, where does story come in? Cause I think some things are hard to, not everything is a story, you know? And so where does story come to play for you? And like, as you think about your content, what role does it, it play as you think about like, I'm going to make, you know, three, five, 10 videos, um, Sometimes, you know, you're, I know from watching your content, I know you're in this transition, which I, I want to talk about. Uh, but like sometimes stories don't make sense. It's like, no, I need, I need to teach. Is that, should that be story too? Or, or what kind of define that for us? Yeah, there are so many different ways to think about this. And something that I, I feel like I've really dove very deep into this topic of navigating how do you be a person online and how do you share your story and what elements of your story do you share and what do you keep behind the scenes and all of that. I think overall, if you think about the very basic elements of a story is it has a beginning, a middle and an end, but a beginning, middle and an end is very boring. Like, I have, a, I have a 20 month old son and there was this one book that we read that I was like, how is this the book? Like the, the dog ran away. There was a conflict at the beginning. That's always what happens. There's something at the beginning that is gonna change the story. The hero embarks on a journey and there's you know, something that changes in the first 15 minutes that kicks off the entire story. Okay, great. Then the dog went here and there and there and then they found the dog. Like there was no conflict. There was no issue of, we might never find the dog. And so to add to the the complexity or like the to add a little bit of intrigue to your story, there's a beginning, a middle, a conflict and an end, right? So if you can just at least in that very basic approach to it. Now, that is going to be very different if you're a tech channel that is just doing how-to videos or something like that. If you're doing a Camtasia tutorial, right? That might be kind of challenging to weave in story. But uh, there was this one guy like who was the, back when I was in high school, he was teaching uh, After Effects Online, Andrew Kramer. And he was this larger than life character that would do these tutorials that would teach After Effects. And even as he was doing it, he would weave in these ridiculous like side rants that added so much flavor to the video itself that somehow he was able to take something that was really dry watching someone like literally they say watching someone edit is like watching paint dry uh, yes that would be a very boring video to watch but because he added this character component to it where he would insert random stories that almost could be cut out of the video it like intrigues the person and draws them in a little bit so I think overall, it's like, I, I think that second part of the line, I don't know exactly how I said it, but like who you are is the most important. The more that you can lean into like, who am I authentically that makes me different than everyone else out there? And the more you can focus on that question, the more you're going to discover what who you are as an interesting character. Because ultimately that's what people want to watch is interesting characters. And if you can crack the code on that, 
then that's that's the true magic online well right because people want to i think and i think this is you know i don't want to get into the big ai conversation but people want to connect with people and you as a person have a, a per, you know your persona because uh, you know my guess is what we put on camera is is not always exactly what we are, but it's a it's a, a, a bigger maybe it's us plus I think Sean Cannell uses the words like us plus two right like plus we're amplified, but like not that be in inauthentic in any way, but to like you're gotta gotta amp it, gotta play it up a little bit for the camera maybe, um, yeah like, exactly right but but I think it's like yeah so that's really a, an interesting idea right like people want to connect with people and people want to connect with something that resonates with them that's why I'll, I'll watch you know as I look through. You know, usually I'm on YouTube. How, how do I fix this thing? How do I change do this problem? Or maybe I just want to be entertained. But I want to I want to connect with someone on that. I don't you know it's I don't want just a dry. I mean, this is me. I just don't want a dry, faceless kind of video unless I'm fixing something and it's emergency, right? Like I I do want to know who is this person? What are they? What's their likes and dislikes to some degree? Yeah, I feel like there's an energetic transfer that occurs with video that is something that a lot of people forget about. So like I always give the example of if you're if you hate your videos, then try this exercise. You'll say, hey, my name is Amanda. I'm testing out my on camera personality to see what works best for me. Something like that. Okay. The phrase doesn't necessarily matter, but then you do it 25% more excited and then 50% more excited and you use your hands and you move your shoulders and you're really energetic and then you go 75 and then 100% like over the top, go crazy with it, like break your comfort zone, you're feeling ridiculous, you're getting that like anxious energy that's kind of overflowing. And then when you watch it back, you're like, wow, no wonder I looked like a serial killer on, on video. <laughs> like, I, I wasn't actually transferring the energy. It's like there's a, you know, they say the camera adds five pounds. Well, the camera also takes away 75% of your enthusiasm right? <laughs> or whatever. So you have to kind of like amp it up to be able to have that, that connection with the audience. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And it's making me think, man, I, is my face telling the audience when I'm sitting here listening? And most of the time I'm not on camera, but like, is my face telling the audience what I'm really thinking? Or is it like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like, no, you got to be you got to be big. So I love that advice. Thank you so much. So, OK, so you said if someone can crack the code to do this, right, it's going to go a long way. What advice for someone who's like, well, but. Amanda, I'm in these situations where I'm not necessarily the personality. It's not my channel. Maybe they're doing it inside their organizations or maybe they're just wanting to communicate with people, you know, via email and I'm sending them a video instead of a meeting, whatever. What advice would you give on, on, on doing that? Some of it sounds like just go through the exercise. Is there anything else you'd, you'd advice you'd give us on kind of finding that, that authentic on camera who you are that would, would be helpful here? Yeah, that's a great question. I, there's a, you know, I, I think the way that I would explore it or the thing that initially came into my mind was, I mean, you're doing this, Matt, right? You're being the face for TechSmith to get this content out there. And you are an interesting person. Like you have your own story and you have your own personality. So many people, they think, oh, I'm just going to show up and I'm just going to be because I'm showing up for a brand, I have to be a certain way. And I would say if I hired someone and they had that mentality, then I'd be like, this isn't going to work. Like I need you to be the intrapreneur that's going to come in and that's going to like add some sort of flavor to it because you really, you want to hire someone that's better than you at something that they're going to do essentially. And so I think that there's probably more room to stretch in different areas if you are in a scenario where you are doing it for a brand to where that company likely wants you to, you know, like if you're a more interesting person, then you attract more people to you. <clears throat> there was this one brand, um, for some reason, I'm like full of examples today. It's hilarious. No, this is great. Uh, Channel, <laughs> Channel Makers is a YouTube channel out there. And there was this one guy, his name was Nate, that ran the channel. And he would pop up and he'd be like, howdy, howdy, everyone. Like, we're just dive into this. And he would create the videos and whatnot. And then he recently stepped away from that channel and created his own channel and has left this company, Channel Makers, to go out and do his own thing. 
Um, the same thing is currently helping, happening with uh, the founder of Wealth, Wealthion, actually, is now stepping away and going and doing his own thing, too. And so I think it's like it's interesting to look at examples that have happened in the past in a way uh, to, to see that you don't have to just be one in the same as TechSmith. It can be like Matt with TechSmith, you know? Yeah. I, well, I, I mean, not first I, that. you've probably had some interesting things there. <laughs> well, I love that because uh, honestly, what I did, I just strong armed them until they said, this is what we are. Uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's not, that's a joke. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you're watching this, Sherry, uh, it's not true. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, you know, so but it's it's interesting, right? Because I I, I have had that struggle. Like, wh- where does Matt stop and where does TechSmith begin, or, or vice versa, right? Like, what is and but to your point, like I think I've been very fortunate um, from a brand perspective is that I haven't had. To, maybe it's because we were already cut my thoughts on, and I've been at TechSmith a long time. So people that listen to the show regularly know, like I'm in my 18th year at the company. So we we have melded really in so many ways. But uh, but regardless of that, like I think there was already some kind of decent alignment, and that helped, right? Like I didn't have to, I didn't have to pretend to try to be someone I'm not, and nor did right. TechSmith have to say, oh gosh. Other than maybe we we're wish you worried had, about you or we're concerned. Right. Yeah. Are you saying stuff that we don't really want you to say or in a way that we wouldn't want you to say it? But like, I mean, there's a few things probably that we've had conversations with over the years about like, what about this and what about that? But like, yeah, I think you're absolutely right that be you, right? Like find to find out who you are and bring that to the brand. I think that I'm, I'm much more interested in that. Like I see internal videos from people that there's not for YouTube, but I love it when their personality comes through. I love seeing what they think and who they are. So great advice. And I think if you get hired to be the face of a company and then they, it's not in alignment with them, like to Matt's point, it's actually the employer's fault. They hired the wrong person. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's more on them in a way because they like they're hiring you to say, hey, run with this position, go do this thing. And they want to celebrate you in that. And so I think there's some recognition there that would probably be something in addition to look at. Yeah. If, if someone wants to, I think, uh, and Amanda, you may or may not know this channel, but uh, if someone's looking for a good, another good example, Rob Wilson from vidIQ, I think is a, is a great example of this. Rob, I mean, he is Rob Wilson and vidIQ, right? Like he has done, he's managed both, but he is definitely Rob. Like it's, you know, I, I don't think yeah. that IQ has shaped him. So just for another example. but And Renee, who you mentioned earlier, right? He was a creator on his own and now YouTube has pulled him in to be the face of the liaison for YouTube creators, right? Because they liked who he was. Yeah. So yeah. I've had, I have a video course and I've had people come through the video course that are in an organization that are learning these skills and they want to step into more of a creator role within that organization and wanting to be seen for that skill set. And I think it's a really interesting like nuance that a lot or like, I guess, department or thing that people aren't really talking about um, how to kind of like stand out within an organization. And I think I always tell that person, like, they want that. Like, they don't want to be the face. There's a reason that they don't have an online presence. Like, if someone within the organization wants to be a face, start kind of making it known and see what happens from there. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's what I did. And that's what others have done. And, uh, you know, and then it there's a whole other episode here that we could we could talk another time because uh, I do want to be mindful of time, but like about like the challenges as as a brand. And if you only have one person as a face, well, then what happens? Because what happens if that person decides to leave or something unfortunate happens to them or they, right. they change? So like there's all these interesting, unique challenges. But but at the I, but at the end of the day, I love what you're saying that like if if your brand doesn't have that and you feel like you want to do that or could do that start making that known and maybe even do some test stuff, like show them like low quality, low fi get on camera. Um, but just know that wh- whatever you're putting on camera has to fit also fit with the brand. You can't, you can't be like, there has to be alignment there. If not, it's not going to work. So. Yeah. One other quick thing on that before Please. we bounce off. 
I, I had someone, I'll do these video sessions with people that are just like one-off sessions. You can ask me whatever question you want. And so this one guy popped up and he's like, Amanda, I'm trying to get the best camera. Like, I just, I just want to, like, when I hop on a Zoom, I just want to look so pro that they can't help but ask, like, what are you using? You know, and it's like, I don't want to have a microphone in the frame. I don't want them to look, I don't want it to look like I tried, but I want it to be very impressive. And that's almost kind of a, a backdoor way to be like, okay, this person really knows what they're doing. They're just starting to look more, they're almost like stepping into the role that they want to be in, even though they haven't been invited or recognized in that, in that space yet. So Did have. Did you just describe the modern dress the way for the job that you want, I think, behind camera? Right. The... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dress for the job that you want. Have Not the, the camera one that... for the job that you want. Yeah, well, you know, uh, well, this has all been uh, just amazing conversation, Amanda. I think uh, there's probably plenty more that we could explore, but we're going we're gonna to keep things moving here because we're going to go in to our speed round questions. If you're new to the show, these are quick, fast questions. Determined by roll of a die. So here we go. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up the, the dice cam and let's go for our first roll. I don't know if you roll a lot of dice, Amanda, but it's always one of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, just confirming, I, that looks like it is on an eight. So question number eight is, you know, obviously one of the things I think is challenging about being a creator is always churning. You got to churn, right? Lots of content, lots of things are always needed because you got the algorithm uh, is always kind of wants you to have new stuff, which, you know, good or, good and bad. And I think there's ways to combat that. But because there's a constant need to to always kind of be thinking about the, the next thing and what, what you're building, where do you turn for inspiration? Oh, great question. Lately, I have created, I stole this idea from Daryl Eves on YouTube to create your own dummy account for content and only exclusively watch the content that you want to create on that account. Mm. And that has been fascinating because there's a very like specific kind of way of going about it. But when I log into that account, it's like I'm only getting that kind of content. And, and that has been really, really an amazing hack to yeah. get inspired, to see what's really working as well and pick up on the patterns of what's working. I, I, I love that. And for a lot of ways, because then you're filtering, because it filters out all the other stuff, but you're just seeing like, whether it's, I'm guessing it's not just, maybe it's content, but maybe it's also stylistically. Is that Case. Yeah, stylistically, the titles, the thumbnails, like looking at all the repeating patterns, you start to kind of almost see what the algorithm is bringing to the surface because you're leaning more into that component. Like you're not searching for content, you're just seeing what does it serve me and based on your view history, which is really fascinating. Yeah, super fascinating. Well, let's go on back to the dice cam. Here we go. Next roll. A four. Awesome. Question number four. Okay. Super fun question. What's your guilty pleasure song or movie that you secretly, but not so secretly, because you're going to tell us that you love? <laughs> it's funny. I, so my favorite movie of all time, for some reason, was Maverick with Mel Gibson. Uh, it's like an old yeah. Western movie. And then we were playing a, a gender reveal name game at you know whenever we were having our gender reveal and my son ended up being named maverick because someone threw that out there so full circle moment there maverick <laughs> highly recommend it <laughs> that's that's awesome and i mean classic 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 movie so yeah. good option good option okay last question here with the dice last roll oh I, it's always gets in a corner makes it hard for me Six to see 16. it's well, I, it's a, this light is, a, it is a nine. The line is underneath it, which you can't see very well, but everyone can just trust me. I'm a trustworthy guy. Uh, so what's the one thing you're most proud of in your career? Mm. One thing I'm most proud of in my career is recognizing when something is out of alignment and being willing to get it back into alignment despite the financial downfalls. 
of that switch. Oof, that's hard. Uh, and good for you because, wow, yeah, what a what a great achievement that is. And I know, uh, you know, sometime we should, I would love to talk with you more about making that transition because that is a, one of those, when you shift to YouTube channel, YouTube does not like it, right? Like, so, uh, but we'll save yes. that for, for another time and another conversation. Uh, as we wrap up our show today, Amanda, if people wanted to learn from you, connect with you, where should they go? The best place right now is just to go to youtube.com slash Amanda Horvath. I am as he has alluded to many times in the midst of a transition. I don't necessarily know where things are going, but I am down to continue the exploration and it is definitely a fun journey. And then in addition to that, go like go to YouTube, click on any of my videos. If you click in the description on any video, you're gonna see several resources that I've put a lot of energy and effort into that will be extremely beneficial for you. So if you want to watch the quick start guide to video, break down how to get up and running with video, three part video series, you'll find that there. Um, and several other resources, including how to master video and uh, launch your online presence. There's another training on that. So that will get you onto my email list and get you into my world. And then you can always hit reply and just have a conversation with me. I'm a real person. <laughs> awesome. And we'll make sure those the links to your channel are in the description and stuff so people can find that really quickly and easily. Well, Amanda, it, is, it has been wonderful to chat with you. And as we wrap up the show, I would like to know, what is your final take? Dive deep into who you are and really get clear on that authentic version of yourself externally or not attached to any external influence. And when you can find that, that's where the true magic will begin to unfold in your life, both in your video presence, your online presence, and in all areas of your life. Fantastic. Well, Amanda, thank you once again for joining me here in the Visual Lounge. Yeah, thanks for having me. You bet. All right, everybody, you heard it right there. Be you, be you times two. Go out and be the authentic self on camera, off camera. So that way, when you are telling your stories or teaching people or doing whatever it is you're going to be doing, it makes sense and it connects with the people that you're trying to connect with. And there's nothing like that. And so, you know, speaking of connections, we'd love to connect with you. We'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Again, email us at thevisuallounge at techsmith.com. Leave a comment down below, you know, in, in all the places. We listen to those, we hear those, we wanna know what's gonna, how can we be better? How could we be that 1% better for you? And we always encourage you, as Amanda said, you know, always just strive to get 1% better. Take a little time to level up every single day. Thanks everybody.